شيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ونؤمن بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له وان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه ومن سار بسيره واهتدى بهديه الى يوم الدين وبعد اوصي نفسي واياكم بتقوى الله سبحانه وتعالى وراقبوه مراقبه من يعلم انه يراه وتزودوا من دنياكم لاخرتكم فان خير الزاد التقوى قال الله تعالى في محكم التنزيل بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الناس اعبدوا ربكم الذي خلقكم والذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون واعتصموا بحبل الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا واذكروا نعمه الله عليكم اذ كنتم اعداء فالف بين قلوبكم فاصبحتم بنعمته اخوانا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما all praise due to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this beautiful day we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for he made it a point for all of us to convene, congregate in this place to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the fact that we are still living. We are not among the dead. We still can add something on our account. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us in this day. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our gathering and our salah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us of all our past sins and protect us, help us to keep away from sinning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and sinning our human, our fellow human beings. My dear brothers and sisters, it is our culture to always stand in front of you and urge you or remind you to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this fear should be in line with creating a good relationship between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That link of not just fearing something that you hate, that link of not fearing something because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because you fear the punishments of Allah, but that link of fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well as building a, a good relationship between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is by totally submitting to his will, being under the obedience of his will, and doing what is required of us to do to our own selves, but also to the entire humanity. Brothers and sisters, Islam, many, many times we hear people saying, and it is true that it's a religion of peace. But it's also a religion of caring to other, with, uh, on others, to others. A religion of bonding together. A religion that, has, that does not have, doesn't have a difference between a white and a black. A religion that doesn't have a distinction between a poor and a rich person a religion that will see every single person equal in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
But many, many times we fall in this trap. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to not again fall into this trap. The trap of discrimination, even amongst Muslims. We said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That is the key word that brings us all together. It is our identity. It is the identity of the rich person. It is the identity of the poor person. It is the identity of the tall person and the short person. The young ones and the old ones. We are all equal in that identity. But as human beings, we start, we start to begin to create differences between ourselves. And because that is the case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to always be the example for the believers. And if you follow the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Fuzina fi hazi fi hazi dunya wa fil akhira. We will and we shall succeed in this dunya and in the hereafter. Why? By following him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wala kadkana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasana. We have indeed in the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the best example if we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our topic is looking, trying to discover how best can we seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How best can we seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by looking into amongst us who are the poor amongst us? How best can we treat our poor people so that we can come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That is building a good relationship between you and the entire and the other person that is poor, but also strength, strengthening that relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the same time, bonding with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us. In Surah Al-Isra, verse 26, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَآتِ ذَا الْقُرُبَى حَقَّهُ وَالْمِسْكِينَ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ وَآتِ ذَا الْقُرُبَى حَقَّهُ وَالْمِسْكِينَ وَابْنَ السَّبِيلِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and at the same time commanding all the believers, those who testified that la ilaha illa Allah Muhammad Rasulullah وَآتِ ذَا الْقُرُبَى حَقَّهُ Give the due right to your family, to your relatives. Do not keep away from your relatives. Do not distance yourself away from your relatives. Please try to join them, join that rope for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. That is number one. After that one, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in one hadith, he told us before I move on to the second one, he told us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes up, comes down here on the closest dunya, the closest sky, and asks who amongst his creatures will seek to be guided and forgiven. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive every single person that asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, except that person that is breaking between him or her and her or his relative. So it becomes incumbent upon every one of us to look into that, brothers and sisters. It's not only, it's not only praying. It's not only doing the charity. It's not only going for hajj. It's not only doing the siyam. But also our dear relatives. Those who are underprivileged. Those who are of a different status than us. Those who are in need of us every time, every now and then, we have to join them. If we don't do that, we are away from Rahmatullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa na'udhu billahi min dhalik. Wa aati dhal quruba haqqahu. Wal miskin. My area of content is al miskin. The poor. Give them their due rate. 
the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam wants us to keep them in our relationship in our company because he himself as a qudwa did that following the commandment of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as muslims we have to maintain this wabna sabil also give the right to someone who's just a traveler someone traveling let's give them the due respect their right as travelers they deserve everything that we possess in our houses for three days according to the teaching of a prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam before the third day when someone is traveling and comes to your house you cannot tell such a person please go away he has the right to an extent that even your own bed could be given to that person he uses it because you have he has a right over you these are things that can bring us together these are things through which we shall gain the mass of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya and the akhirah how did the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam treat the poor because of time i want to share with you the supplication of prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he usually said it He usually said it, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Before I get to that, if we don't treat the poor in the right manner, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fade away. If we don't do what the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did following the, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commandment, then we are bound to suffering continuously. If we don't treat the poor the way the companions of, of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa treated them, then we are bound to experiencing battles that are in the world all over today. Remember, brothers and sisters, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to change that that is within our hearts before he changes situations for us. If any calamity comes in place, we have to ask our questions, one big question. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose or permit this to be in place? Why is it that me, myself, a person who prays five prayers a day, who does my charity, who does all the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to do, zakah I do it, but why is it that this is coming to me? That question has run in every Muslim's mind every time there is a test. Until then, we shall come to know by going through step by step, what did I go wrong? Where did I go wrong in the day that I can rectify it? But most of the time, we are doing wrong to the right people, to the, right, to the, to the, to the poor people, and the consequences of doing wrong to them, we suffer as we shall see in the second part of our khutbah. واستغفر الله العظيم الى ولكم سائر المسلمين فاستغفروه انه هو الغفور الرحيم وهو البر الكريم الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين Brothers and sisters, one day the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was in a sport in the company of one Sahaba, according to one hadith narrated by, reported by Abu al-Abbas, Sahal ibn Sa'ad, and it is in Bukhari and Muslim. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, with a man next to him, Another person who's the third person comes to pass by. The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looks at him. And then he looks at the person that is seated next to him and says, What do you think about the gentleman? The response from the other gentleman was that, MashaAllah, 
This is one of the wealthiest people, I mean, the wealthiest people in our community. He has two things. So special. If he goes for a girl, a wife, a woman to marry, proposes a marriage, the marriage will be accepted there and then. And number two, if he is to intercede for someone, the intercession will be granted. فَسَكَتَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ After that statement, the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, kept quiet. Then another person comes, passes by, and here comes the question again to that person from the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, what do you think about that man? The response was, that إِنَّهُ مِنَ الْفُقَرَاءِ الْمَسَاكِينَ إِنَّهُ مِنَ الْفُقَرَاءِ الْمَسَاكِينَ That gentleman is among the poor people. Three things. If he proposes a marriage, no one will accept it. Very few people will say, yes, welcome, come marry my family, from my family. And if he is to intercede for anyone, the intercession will be granted. I mean, won't be granted. And if he said something, not every person will hear or listen to that person. Everyone will say, who's the person that is saying this? Doesn't he know where he could speak from, or probably where, what his status is, and what company he should be in, or she should be in. And then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that person, the one that you said, that is poor, is more honorable for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala than the other person that is so respected. Because in the meaning of other hadith, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he first invited people to accept Islam, there was very, very few of the agniya, of the rich people that accepted da'wah. It was only a few fuqara that accepted the qawl, la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. To an extent, then when Muslims migrated from Mecca, to an outside country, Hirkal asks, are you believing in that gentleman, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? First tell me the criteria or the status of people who believe in him and his dawah. The answer was that the people who believe in him are the poor. And his knowledge of the previous books testifying that he testified by saying that is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the previous messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala people who believed in them are the people of the poor status but I want to remind you brothers and sisters that this is what is happening in our society if a poor person goes to propose a marriage in a family that is so rich they will say no go find your status and then the consequences are that we are fighting each other. We don't know what enmity we caused because we angered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the first place. And the enmity is increasing between the rich and the rich, between the rich and the poor, and there is no peace in the world. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never change a people's situation until we change what is within our heart. We have to clean this. Have due respect for the poor. Respect them to an extent that we call and invite them to eat and share with us places of sitting, but also to eat together. Because that was the culture of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He never had to distance himself away from the poor. That's why he said most, most of his time, Allahumma, 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 oh Allah, I ask you to forgive me, to help me do the right good things. Allahumma inni as'aluka fi'il al-khayrat 
وترك المنكرات وحب المساكين او الله اي اسك يو تو هيلب مي دو ذا جود ثينج اولويز ذات بليزز يو ماي لورد الله سبحانه وتعالى اند اولسو هيلب مي تو ديستانس ماي سيلف اواي ماي سيلف اواي فروم المنكرات ايفريثين ذات از فاحش ايفريثين ذات از رونغ بت موست امبورتنتلي وحب المساكين اند تو لاف ذا بور ماي ديير براذرز اند سيسترز Let's go back and love our poor brothers and sisters. Maybe, and I don't know, maybe, Allahu A'lam, if we do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change the situation for us. The battles that are existing in the world, Syria, Muslims fighting Muslims, Palestine, endless, Burma, running away. It is because we Muslims have the responsibility that probably we'd never we never fulfilled that we need to fulfill today allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks into our hearts and is able and is willing to forgive us and change our situation to the best if we do that we shall live a harmonious kind of life in this world today and if we do that we shall be successful when we meet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment ثم صلى على البشير المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم فان الله سبحانه وتعالى امركم قائلا ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد وارض اللهم عن الاربعه الخلفاء ابي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن الصحابه اجمعين وعنا معهم بجودك وكرمك اكرم الاكرمين اللهم عز الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول فيتبعون احسنه اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه يا رب العالمين اللهم انا نسالك فعل الخيرات وترك المنكرات وحب المساكين يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر لنا ولاخواننا الذين سبقونا بالايمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين امنوا ربنا انك رؤوف رحيم واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا انت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين عباد الله ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون واذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله اكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون واقم الصلاه ان الصلاه تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر